welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have what I believe is an approachable puzzle for you, unlike the last couple of days, which have been monstrously hard puzzles. Uh, this is called Swirl, and it's by the great Zeta Math. Um, and it's got a very cool and short rule set, which I'm almost certainly to forget the latter half of. Basically, the, 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 the second rule is that no pair of orthogonally adjacent cells in the grid, so i.e. no dominoes in the grid, can contain digits adding to five. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm going to need that to solve it, um, but it's got a whopping high rating. On Logic Masters Germany this and I was I, I was reading the comments just before I turned on the webcam and someone said yes I did this with my child and uh, you know we loved it so, so apparently it's child's play we'll see in a moment or two what do I need to tell you about first well um, we're gonna return to streaming the game Teji tomorrow night um, yeah I'm sorry we, we've had a bit of a hiatus on that but we are going to we're going to attempt again to revisit that world so 10 p.m. tomorrow we'd love to have your company um, as we make our way through that, that puzzle game, and very cool it is too. Um, then I've got a couple of birthdays to do. Leonie, it's your 32nd birthday today, and I know this because over there in the Netherlands, your boyfriend Vincent wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So Leonie, I hope you're able to have chocolate cake to celebrate, and of course you have a great day today. And then David, down there, all the way down there in Geelong, uh, near Melbourne, go cats, um, has turned 50 today. And I know this because your brother Rowan uh, wrote to us. And Rowan, you did solve correctly the whole of Jay Dyer's uh, Sudoku hunt for, for January. So I'm killing two birds with one stone by doing this birthday announcement. David, I hope you have a fantastic birthday. Rowan, you've got your shout out for finishing um, for finishing Jay Dyer's hunt. And in fact, I'll read some more names for correct for correct solvers of the whole thing. So well done to Sampath Kumar, Hazlitt 92, John Bruns, um, Melissa Hernandez, Martin Arts, Luke Bovard, Testa Rossa, Grufty, James Farrer, Marshall Anderson, and the dogs Neville, Scout, and Midge. I'm sure they were very helpful, Marshall. Uh, Don Stanley, Rob Driscoll, Shane Bowden, Michael Stranieri, Jose Cusco, Lapsed Memory, and Lavender Gooms. You all sent in the correct entry. And we have, well, it's not long, two days' time. We've got um, the Glum Hippo Sudoku Hunt, um, uh, which is all about fossils of one type or another. And you have the chance to win the, um, uh, the Glum Hippo Plushie, the the uh, which I haven't got a picture of to hand, but I I've shown it in the last couple of videos. It's high in demand, so if you want if you want to win the plushie, then yeah, get your pencils sharpened because on the first of February, that reward will be coming out. But now we get to solve Zeta Math. Hopefully, let's have a look at Swirl, and I'll read you the rules. They are as follows: uh, Normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent digits on a green line must differ by at least five. So these are normal so-called German whispers. This is a German whispers constraint. I don't know where that name came from originally. Um, but let's say that this, well, let's do a short line. Let's say this cell here was an eight. If that was an eight, this cell would have to be at least five different from eight. So it would have to be one, two, or three. They would be the options for that green line. And then we've got the bit about no domino can contain digits summing to five. So imagine we worked out this cell here was a one then none of those, whoopsie, none of these cells could be a four because if any of them were to be a four, we would be able to create a domino that's with digits summing to five and presumably that would break the puzzle. Zeta Maths puzzles are always a treat, so do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking hands on the keyboard. And well, it's called swirl presumably because of the great big swirl in the grid. And I guess actually, before we start, I should tell you the two secrets of German whispers, um, which I'm sure are going to be important. Um, so what are the secrets of German whispers? Well, these are different from the general secret about Sudoku, which I'm fairly sure won't come into this puzzle. Oh, no, it probably won't come into this puzzle. There's very little arithmetic to be done in this puzzle. But the, um, the secret of, of green lines well, the first secret is you can never put a 5 on a green line. Let's try and put a 5 on and see why it breaks. If we put a 5 on a green line, the next digit becomes impossible. 
because we need digits that are 5 away from 5 at least. If we go downwards, we're going 0. We're, well, we're getting to 0 or negative territory. If we go upwards, we're going to 10 or higher. And they don't work. So you can never put 5 on a green line. Now let's just pause there and see. I'm seeing... No, actually, for some reason I thought that's so I couldn't be a 5. That's not true. Um, 5 in box... No, actually, hang on. 5s... Uh, maybe they aren't the key to this then. 5 in this box might be the most restricted thing. I think it's got to be in one of two places. 5 in row... No, <laughs> 5 in row 7 I thought I was going to be able to place, but no. I think it's got one of two positions to go into. Okay, so that well, that's the first half of the secret. Let's try the second half of the secret about green lines, which is that they, they have what we call oscillating polarity. What on earth does that mean? Well, let's, let's try it with a short line first. The idea is that whatever this digit is, we can define it in one of two binary ways. We can say it's either less than 5 or it's greater than 5 because it can't be 5. Now imagine it's less than 5. What's the characteristic of this digit, the next digit on the line? Well, if this is less than 5, because this digit is at least 5 away, even if this was a 1, this digit would have to be the other side of 5. It would have to be 6 or higher. So if that's low, lower than 5, this is higher than 5, and then that would be lower than 5 again. It would flip back the other side of 5. So you get this oscillation. So what I think I need to do to start this puzzle is to shade this line with each alternate cell, which looks like all of those have the same color. Now we get the color choice question. I'll go blue for those. And we'll make these other cells orange. So we now know, and it's all instantly interesting actually, yeah, okay. So although we don't know whether the blue digits are, are high or low, we can see, look, that we've got a whole set of blue digits in column 6. And what do I mean by a set of digits? Well, because we know that blue is either the digits lower than 5 or higher than 5, if blue is low, these are the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4. If blue is high, they're the digits 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we know that the rest of this column... Ah, so that cell. So the, we know the rest of this column contains either the 5 or, an, or, or orange digits. Well, this cannot be a 5 because it's on a whispers line. So that is orange, which means this is blue because we have to oscillate polarity. And we're starting... Oh, no. Hang on, have I made... No, all right, I suddenly thought, I seem to have missed a cell out here. I think that was just, let me just, I'm going to double check my shading now, because that's going to be, if I have, if I've got two adjacent digits on the line of the same color, that will obviously not be correct. I think it looks okay. I must have just missed that one out. I've now got three oranges in row, oh, sorry, in column seven. And right, here is a little thought for us. Those two digits, where do they go in box five? That's quite an interesting question because they're orange, so they can't be blue. Orange and blue are different. They can't go in those cells, so they go in those two cells. They can't be the same digit, so they've got to occupy those two cells. And that means we get a digit. We have found a weird naked single in the centre of the grid. So often the centre of a grid in variant Sudoku is a 5. Well, that is a 5, and the reason I know it's a 5 is it sees by the power of orangeness all four orange digits, and by the t power of four blue digits in its box, it can't be blue either. So it's neither blue nor orange, and therefore it can only be five. And those two squares have to be the, the remaining two oranges. Oh, look. Yes, okay, so now row five contains blues, because it's got, it's got four oranges and a five in it. And in fact, of course, column five has all blues. And we're actually getting somewhere here because we've got, again, we've got four oranges and a five. This is what's catching my eye now. 
probably not the most sensible place to look. But of course, if we consider any domino on, on a green line in the puzzle, we know it contains one of each colour because it must oscillate polarity. So there must be a blue cell in one of those two cells. And that means that in this box look, all four blues must be contained within those five cells. So this cell can't be another blue. So that's got to be orange. And that gives us some more oranges by oscillation along this line. Oh, no, uh, I thought I was going to get something in row seven. But alas, um, alas, poor Yorick and alas, poor Simon, no. Uh, okay. I'm not seeing anything else. Sorry, that was a bit of a pregnant pause, wasn't it? I'm, I am trying to look for something else. Oh, where does five go in this box now? So because we managed to eliminate five from these cells, I think everything else in this box is on a green line. So we can hide five in the corner. Five's got to be in a domino at the top of column four. So we now know what that digit is. That digit is orange. I've not got four oranges in that column. So, so this square, do I know what that one is? Um, no, <laughs> I don't think I do. Okay. Golly, if that was orange, it would be hugely powerful. Because if that was orange, it's not only competing or completing the quota of oranges in box six and making oranges core eight there, it would make this blue and that would complete the blues in row seven. So that would get me the, the polarity of that line as well. OK, I'm not seeing much more. I think I'm going to have to think about this other rule, the rule that I... I barely remember. So dominoes can't, dominoes can't add up to five. Is that where we go next? Or do we think about, let me just think about this. Hang on. Um, how am I going to determine which of orange and blue is high and low. So it must be something to do with dominoes that are being formed in the same colour in the grid. And so for some reason, one of the colours is not going to work with the low digits. Ah. Well, I haven't, I haven't got an answer to that question, by the way. I haven't got an answer to that question. I've seen something else, which is th this cell. Ah, oh, that's really, that's really, really beautiful. I, I, I won't actually, I, I'll give you a moment. Just think about that cell for a moment, if you've not seen anything cool about it, because it's really, really interesting to me. Admittedly, I might not be the person that you would seek out at a party. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I am normally there standing in the corner. That's me in the corner. Um, and uh, not normally in the spotlight. Um, but this cell here, I can tell you some stories about. It is very interesting. And Right, so hopefully, if you if you didn't spot it, hopefully you paused the video and gave yourself a moment. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. The reason this is interesting is, I think it's true to say that, well, I mean, I suppose we could have looked at any of these sort of points of the spiral. But don't, I think these all have to be different. Because this digit, if we ask where it goes in box five, it's forced into one of those two cells. And therefore, it can't go on another point of the spiral. But the same is true here. That cell is forced into one of those. It can't go there. This cell is forced into one of these. It can't go there. So these digits are, are different. And what that means is that this cell is extreme because that is where the symmetry breaks. It's really beautiful, actually, this. It's a lovely little idea.
And what do I mean by extreme? Well, what I'm thinking is, because I know that this is either, because these digits are all different, they're either 1, 2, 3, and 4, or 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now, that means one of them, imagine, imagine they're 1, 2, 3, and 4. I need to make one of these a 4. And 4 is a very difficult digit to put on. I didn't use this in the secret explanation, but it's a very difficult digit to put on a, a whispers line because it only has one natural partner, and that's the digit 9. We need a digit 5 away from 4. It's the same if we think about which one of these could be the 6 if, if orange turns out to be the high numbers because 6 only has one natural partner. So let's try and make this a 6. It breaks because both of those have to be 1. And that's going to be the case if we put 6 here or 4. It's going to be the case if we put 6 or 4 here. The only place we get away with it is here. And because we know that there must, because these digits are all different, one of these had to be the extreme digit, or what I'm calling the extreme digit, the digit with only one partner, the monogamous digit. So this has to be the monogamous digit. It's got to be the four or the six. And therefore these squares have to be the partner, the monogamous partner of the four or the six. So these squares are ones and nines. Now, what does that mean? The answer to that is I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I was hoping that that was going to yield. Yield something. There is. Oh, I see. Oh, my goodness me, that is quite stunning. I think, I think I've got this. I think I understand. Oh. Wow. Absolutely wow. That is so pretty. That is so pretty. Right. Okay. We might have been able to come at this in a different way, but I've come at it this way. And what I want to think about now is the middle box. And this might have been where I was meant to start, but I didn't start there. So I want to look at these four cells. Now, I got obsessed with this digit and noting that these four digits were all different in orange, but obviously these four digits are all different in blue. Now, there's a problem here, again, with the what we're calling the monogamous digit, the four or the six. Which one of these could be the monogamous digit? Let's try and make it this one. Let's make this a six. Why is that a problem? Well, it's because if this is six, both of those are one, and now you can't put one in the middle box. Because if this is six, blue's high, so blue can't be one, and these ones sort of pinch the rest of the box away. You can't do anything. It's broken. So the, the monogamous digit is going to have to go in this cell. So that has to be a four or a six. But now, now look at this domino. Because something rather extraordinary has happened to this domino. If blue, well, if blue is low, what 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 do we put into the, to the, this this domino? We put the unmemorable rule. Well, the unmemorable rule comes to our rescue because this square here, if that's four, that will have to be one because these are the same color, and four and one are not allowed to go next to each other because they add up to five. That is absolutely beautiful. So it's sort of, it's the double effect of the spiral that these cells combined with these cells and the way they interact with the Zetamath, that is so pretty. It really is gorgeous. And now, now we're away because we've now worked out that it's not possible for these to be low. So, so we can actually write them in. We can write six and nine in. We now know this is four, this is nine. These two have to be seven and eight, therefore, because they're not six and nine. 
4 has to go in one of those cells by Sudoku. 6 must be next to 1 uh, on a whisper because we need a digit that's 5 away. Um, we know that the because we know that the points of the spiral are all different, we can put two and three into those squares. Yes, okay, and because they're different, because these are different, one of these is a three. One of those two squares must be a three. They can't both be two. So this square cannot be a seven. Because if it was a seven, it will be adjacent to a three on a whisper. And three and seven are only four apart, not five. So that must be eight. That must be seven. That must be two. That must be three. And the two is then sheltered between the, the, the seven, sorry, is sheltered between the one and the two. And the whole world makes sense. So look, 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 look. Now, this three, where is its home in box five? It can't be next to the two because that's a domino that adds up to five. So we put three there. We put one there by Sudoku. This is a two, four pair. Um, um, now what do we do? Now we get stuck. But I don't care if we get stuck now because that 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 spiral is an absolute wonder. It's so pretty. Um, okay, what we should probably do is continue to label up our 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 lines isn't it because now we know an awful lot about the colors so this square has to be one two or three this square has to be two or four only now can it really be four if it's four this is forced to be a nine that might oh no 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 <laughs> the, the, the forgettable rule <laughs> It can't be four because it would be in a domino with a one, Simon. Okay, and that can't be four because it would be in a domino with a one. So that's a three. Oh, for goodness sake, man. Um, okay. So this is two, one, three. This is eight or nine then because it's got to be at least five different from three. This is, oh, this is eight or nine. It can't be nine. So that's become an eight. Eight lives at the bottom of column five. This square here is low and it can't be four so it's one two or three it's not two by the power of sudoku this square is low and it's not four so it's one two or three please keep an eye on the lines uh the the dominoes oh yeah okay i need to do this look this four can't be next to a one so that's two or three so this isn't able to be six or nine so that's got to be seven or eight uh, that square's got to be low and ca now can't be four because four's not five away from seven or eight so that's become a one out of absolutely nowhere four in this box now can't be next to one or we'll get a, a difficulty so four is up there can't be ah four can't be here because that would be a nine so four is now locked into one of two places four is in one of four is in one of two places over here and it can't go on the line because that would be a nine and it would clash so we get a four here which is our final orange look um, for this box which means this must be blue which means that must be orange which means that we know it's a four that must be a nine this has become an eight um, right this is a six or a seven this is high by the power of grayskull and therefore a six or so. ah, six or seven how did i know that was a six or a seven hang on what did i just do then I don't know. Oh no, that's that is fair. Sorry, I, all I did was obeyed my own my own colouring of the grid. So I, I used the fact that I'd labelled this blue, and I, that was fair because there's a five in the middle. So five is now only got one one place left in this box. That's probably been available for ages. Oh, maybe I'm not sure actually. It, I think maybe once we got that four, we we cleared that up. So. Anyway, this is six or seven, so this is one or two, and it's not one because it would be next to four, so that's two, which means that's seven, that's six. So these are a seven, nine pair over on this side of the grid. I've got all my, I haven't put eight into this row, so this must be a five, eight pair. These two squares must be two, four, which, which are legitimate digits, although two can't go, in. oh, right, sorry, look, two and four, 
by Sudoku are in these three squares, but this can be neither two nor four. If it was two, it makes a naughty domino. If it was four, it puts a nine here. So we get the two, four pair, and we know that this square now is a, a six, which is a useful digit, a very useful digit, because six only has one. It's the, it's, the, it's the monogamous digit. It only has one partner. So this now is a one, a one. That's become a one. That's got to be six, seven, or eight. I think all of which are legitimate options. Um, now, <laughs> oh, Simon. Three can't go next to two. What a wally. Uh, this one at the bottom gives me a three at the top. So that's got to be a four, not on a whispers line. So not the most useful four we've ever seen in our lives. We can do some gluing and some oranging. These have both got to be orange look. Oh no, I tried to do Sudoku then. Don't don't be so silly, Simon. Why would you why on earth would you reduce reduce yourself to doing Sudoku at this 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 juncture of a puzzle? Ah. Where does the two or the three go in box eight? That well the answer is not there. Because if it did, that would be a naughty domino. So it must go there, and that's absolutely lovely. Because that determines the parity of this line or the polarity of it that gets us another orange digit here which can't be a two or a three so that's got to be a one or a four if it's a four this would be a nine and it can't be so that's just become a one out of absolutely nowhere one one is making a home for itself at the top of column one this square is six or seven well okay so this can't be three because three could never be next to six or seven. So that's got to be two, that's got to be three, that's got to be eight now because it can't be seven, it would be too close. That's become a five, that's become an eight, which gets a color, that becomes a blue. We get an eight up here by the power of Sudoku. This is no longer an eight. Um, Okie dokie, can we see anything else useful? Maybe I should color in my fives. No. Oh, this can't look. This is a two, so it can't be next to six. That's got to be a seven. So that's a five, six pair at the top of the grid. And that means those two squares are a seven, nine pair. Which I think we're going to have to use Sudoku to figure that out. This is a six, eight pair. Again, it feels like Sudoku is going to be our only, our only avenue to resolve that. What about hmm, uh, okay oh, oh yes that digit is a little bit interesting not very interesting just moderately interesting. I can see it's not a low number because it can't be orange anymore one two three and four all look at it and it's not five so it's seven or nine and it's blue but it's not the thing is, it's not on a green line, so it's a bit, it's probably not a sensible thing to note. If this is orange, it has to be two, because four would be next to one, and that's not allowed. So if this was two, that would be a six, or a, that, would, that would be a seven, and that would resolve these two digits. But if it's a high digit, Oh no, that's right. Oh, that's much simpler. Okay, let's instead look at this digit. That digit really cannot be low because it sees one, two, three, and four. So that is a high digit, which means it is six or seven. It's blue and it can't be next to one. So it must be two here because six and seven can only be next to one and two on the line. So we actually get another orange digit here. We've got a six, seven pair here. We know that this is the seven. This is the six. We need to put five and, oh, five in this row is now forced to be here, which means that square's got to be a one by Sudoku. We can put a one pencil mark at the top. We can orangeify this. Five doesn't deserve anything. Um, and what have we got left to place? We've got threes, fours, sixes, and nine. Oh. I see. Right, let's look at this line. 
because can it the question we need to ask is has it got six on it and the answer is no because six is the monogamous digit again if it says a six on the line it has to be accompanied by a one which it cannot be so that's the only place six can go in the box so six and eight go in and now there's only one high digit left so we know the polarity of this the high digit has to separate and keep apart the three and the four that otherwise want to get too cuddly uh, four in this column we can now place it's got to go there which means this square is a seven or a nine i'm seeing that's making a pair of sevens and nines in row one um this seven is giving me a seven here a nine here how do i do the three and the four at the bottom they're being recalcitrant don't be recalcitrant you naughty digits um have I done all my green lines now? I think I might have done, surprisingly. Okay, let's, let's make sure we've got all the colouring going that we could possibly get. That's got to be uh, a blue digit. Can't be low and it can't be five. That's got to be a blue digit. These are both orange digits. That's definitely an orange digit. And okay so that digit is a seven or an eight we might we might not need coloring from now on it's just quite exciting to keep it going isn't it all right let's have a look at where should we look this row i'm not sure three four five three four five and nine into these squares three four five and nine so that can't be five that can't be nine or four. This square can't be three or four. So have we got anything useful now when we stare back at this? The answer is apparently not. Okay, so it's gonna be something else then. What about, what about, uh, it's nearly, this is nearly a naked single. I think that has to be three or six. It's in, or in orange territory, it's only got three left. In blue territory, it's only got six left and it can't be five. So that's three or six. Four is in one of these two cells. Two is in one of those two cells. We've already done the one, the six. No, the six has got three positions. So that's not helpful. Five, nine, no. Ah! I'm stuck. Oh, maybe it's this seven nine pair. Is that somehow helpful? That digit. That's far. Oh, no, five or eight. I think are the two options for that one. Have I really filled in all of the green the green cells? Because this is now feeling like I might not have done three four seven and eight. This is a three or a seven. No, that's not doing it either. Ones, threes, fours. No, I mustn't get stuck. No, it's going so prettily. What a disaster. Uh, I'm going to double click my fives and turn them fluorescent. Maybe, oh, I tell you what, it could be Sudoku. No, I was wondering whether it was the fives and whether I could do some Sudoku to help me with fives because I'm not really focused on that at all. But I don't think it's that. Um, so, I don't know. We're, we've got, I'm in a bit of a quandary about where to think. I think I'll have a look at this row. Three, five, six. Three, five, six, seven, nine. So that square is three or nine. That's not quite done it, has it? Oh, I've forgotten. I know what I've forgotten. I've forgotten the naughty rule again. Oh, Simon. Oh, look. Oh, don't believe it. That's so embarrassing. It's an un... It's an un... What's the right, right word for something that's completely unmemorable? It's not unrememberable. That's... that's is that a word? Unrememberable? It is it is completely unrememberable. Look, one and four can't go next to each other. Oh, for goodness sake, four and two go into the grid. Now this can't be a three. Oh, I don't believe it. This is so embarrassing. Um, oh, you're going to have been 
absolutely yelling at me. I'm oh three and one. It can just be done in this column now. One must be placed over there. Uh, where does the two go? It can't go next to the three. Okay, now I now 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 I focus on it. I might be able to remember it. Do goes in the corner. No song for you. Eight is sorted there. Look, that's become a five. Five and six go into the grid. <laughs> uh, this square here has got to be a five. Okay, so the, I think all the fives now might be done, uh, especially if I write that one in at the bottom. So that becomes a nine. Let's greenify this one. Nine is a uh, blue digit. This digit is a seven or an eight, which apparently is not resolved. Um, and we can ask questions like, what's that? The answer is three or seven. Now, can it really be both of those things? I think that one actually can be. It's only the low digits I've got to concentrate on. Oh, and it's given me a three seven pair in this column, which seems to make that square have to be a six. And if we look at this row now, that square can only be eight or nine, which actually isn't resolved, is it? I don't think. Right. Oh. Where does the four go in box nine? It can't go next to the one. Four goes in the corner. Okay, so now I get a three nine pair here. I get an eight at the top. I get a seven seven nine nine seven three nine. That's become a three seven eight. An absent the absolute nonsense when I forgot the rule. Uh, just purely you understand because it is it's like some sort of harry potter spell and you can't actually remember it um it's nothing to do with my ineptitude at all that i believe is the solution to the puzzle very very enjoyable that is that has got one of the most beautiful little break-ins that little vignette around this spiral and the idea about these points and the way that the symmetry breaks around this is quite gorgeous, say to math. And I've no doubt that you chuckled away when you saw however long it was in that video when I couldn't remember the rule. But you did use the unrememberable rule. So it's really your fault. Thanks for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And I like the comments, especially when they're kind.